you also can have dunamis, access to dunamis outside of you from the angelic host that are sent to minister to those who inherit salvation. And God's word, conceived in the spirit, formed on the tongue, spoken through the mouth, has created power. God's protection for you is to such an extent that an atomic bomb can go off next to you and it won't hurt you. Jesus is doing this not to make himself famous and scratch notches on his spiritual crown. No, he's doing it so that we walk free. the higher life my name is Jenny and in this series we are focusing on the well-being of our soul where we are able to gain absolute control and victory that is lasting over the area of our thoughts so that we can begin to think like Jesus speak like Jesus and act like Jesus being his representatives on this earth now to help us get into the truth of God's word, I have an amazing panel and I'd like to introduce them to you. We have Christine Blumstein from Pentecostal Ministries Africa. Katie Souza from Expected End Ministries in the USA. And we have Dr. Michelle Stradon from Eagles Wings Ministries. Now in this session, we are moving forward with excellence of soul. And we are going to see how this affects the area of our physical healing. Are you ready to get into the word with me? Well, ladies, here we are at the table of discussion. Ready to get into the word of God again, understanding we are moving forward in excellence of soul and this is going to affect our physical healing as well and walking in that victory but we cannot do it without the dunamis power of god and understanding that it's not just us who are the carriers but there are angelic hosts that are also there to minister to us amen it's true it's true uh, we we've been talking about dunamis you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When we are born again in Jesus, the power comes in us with the Holy Spirit. That power is dunamis, and it means excellence of soul. It means power to perform miracles. It means power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. But it also means this, the power that rests in and on hosts. This is in the Thayer's lexicon. What are the hosts of heaven? That's the angelic realm. See, you not only can have access to dunamis coming, flowing, from your spirit man out into your soul to heal you, into your finances to cause you to prosper, into your relationships or your physical body to perform miracles. But you also can have dunamis, access to dunamis outside of you from the angelic host that are sent to minister to those who inherit salvation. They're sent to us and they're endowed, they're clothed with dunamis power, remember, they're created by Christ. In him, for him, by him, all things were created, things in the unseen realm. That includes angels. So they're carrying his nature, they're carrying his power, and that power is dunamis. So when they come to minister to us, the way they're able to perform miracles is through dunamis power. They can actually release that dunamis that they're carrying, yes. and it can cause you to be excellent soul. They can help you get healed in your soul when you're downtrodden, when you're upset upset, oppressed, but they can also bring power to perform miracles and even power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. Okay, so uh, it's so amazing that how do we activate in the angels? And one of the ways is through our words. When we start decreeing uh, scriptures about Duno's power, like Ephesians 3.16, you know, Paul said, I pray you be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power, that's Dunamis, in your inner man by the Holy Spirit. As you begin to decree that, it's released from in here by the Holy Spirit, but it's also angels hearken to the voice of His Word. Wow. That word voice means man's voice and God's voice. That's so right. it's not just God that can say it, it's us. We're not commanding angels, but we're decreeing, we're saying the scriptures, angels are hearkening to the voice of His Word through us, 
And then they activate. They begin to release healing. They begin to release miracles. Uh, almost 90 some odd percent of the miracles that you see this ministry walking in happen because of the Holy Spirit and Dunam's power working with angels, angelic realm, through the decrees I'm making as I'm, as I'm you know, releasing decrees for people to get healed. I'm going to show you a powerful testimony right now. This happened in prison. Two guys had metal come out of their back, proven by metal detectors, and this miracle is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit and Dunam's power working with the angelic realm. Let's look at that miracle right now. You had an injury to your spine, correct, or in your neck? Yes. I first had a car accident where a deer tried to come through my windshield and messed up two vertebrae in my neck. And then about three years later, I fell off a porch about six feet up in the air straight onto my head. Messed up number three and four vertebrae in my neck, split them clear in two. And that's basically it. Now, you have metal in your neck, is that right? Or you had metal in your neck? Okay. Well, what did they do? Did they subs like, like try to foundation the, the spine with the metal? What is it? Well, it was welded. I have a cadaver part in there and screws and bolts and all kinds of stuff. And I've just had constant tightness in my neck and shoulders ever since until last night. Can you check again for us right now? And I still don't feel it. So, in other words, IE is gone. 21 years ago, you had a severe accident. Tell us what happened. Well, I was working in the oil field uh, offshore in New Orleans in the Gulf of Mexico and on a drilling rig. And when you pick up drill pipe to make a connection, you pick it up with a chain to bring it into the mouse hole. And the chain broke and it fell on me and broke my neck and broke my back. How big is that pipe? It's about 32 feet long and weighs it's probably two, 3,000 pounds. I've had three major back surgeries since then. They had to take a bone out of my hip, go through the front of my neck, and fuse C4, 5, 6, and 7. And then my low back, I have a 15-inch scar where they did a laminectomy and put in three 10-inch rods, two plates, and several screws that tighten the plates. I had asked you last night, Larry, if you had ever been able to actually touch and feel the plates and the rods with your hand, and you said no. No. So I, we couldn't actually check to see if they were gone like we did with the other Larry. You know, he could feel them and then he didn't. They were gone. The nurse could give me a quick x-ray. We were hoping one of the, the police could bring down one of the metal things. Can we do it? Can we do it? Oh, where are you? Where are you, Larry? Okay. Uh, I think it's right here, isn't it? Okay. Explain what one of these is. It detects metal, uh, and it'll go through the skin also, so it was legit. Now, I saw you. Y you actually went and got that. We're so grateful. Aren't we so grateful? Can we give Sergeant a hand? Aren't we so grateful? Okay. What would that mean to you, that, w that you weren't detecting any metal on men that once had metal in their bodies? It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... Okay, so that miracle, I'm just trying to clue you in so you understand how to orchestrate miracles. Okay, that miracle is orchestrated through numerous things. First of all, uh, the Holy Spirit and Dunam's power. I taught those men, prior to that miracle, about the healing of the soul. Correct. Okay, and, and so I had them decreeing, speaking, angels hearken to the voice of his word. Mm -hmm. I had them decreeing scriptures like Ephesians 3.16 where Paul says, I pray you're, you be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power, Dunamis, in your inner man, that's your soul. So I had them decreeing those words. So they're decreeing that their soul's being healed. Angels are listening to it. So the power is coming from inside of them out and also angels around them. Now, as they're doing this, making these decrees, I see the heavens open up in the room and a staircase drops down like Jacob's ladder. And I see angels coming down with body parts on platters. One of them actually, by the way, was a knuckle and this one guy in that same meeting grew a knuckle. You saw the video in another show. He actually grew a knuckle. In. But so he, they came down, these angels came down with body parts, okay? One was a neck and one was a spine. And so they went and they began to, as I began to continue to decree, their souls being healed and their traumas being broken off in these men's souls, 
The angels are going behind these guys and putting the body parts in. Now, my volunteers did not know that I saw the angels with the body parts. Two of them told me later on, they said, we saw the one layer with the neck. Yes. We saw, when we were standing behind him, because he was on the stage, he said, we saw his shirt flapping like this <laughs> as the angel was making the exchange. Awesome. Okay, now get this. Both those guys, the whole crowd there was like, what? All those guys, the, the men, half of them were like, oh, my God. And the other half were like, oh, I don't know. You guys are trying to pull a fast one on us, right? So they all followed those two men, Larry and Larry, to the chow hall there. Now, chow hall in that facility has a metal detector in it. You have to go through it to get into chow so nobody gets shanked and stabbed during, during dinner, right? When they eat. So, and they all know that those two guys, the cops all know it too, because they all wear a special, that says that they're gonna set off the metal detector. They all, all go through it. They all know those two guys always set off the metal detector. And that day, guess what? From that day on, they never set it off Praise again. Praise God. Ever. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, that, and just one more small comment. That sergeant, that sergeant's so precious. He went to the chaplain's office after that. He said, I don't know what I just saw. I've never seen anything like it. But I do, sure do wish my quadriplegic son was here today. Oh, wow. And then what he does now is the Larry with the bat got out like within a week after that. But the other Larry with the neck is still there. And he says every time he walks that yard, if that sergeant's on duty, he stops Larry, pulls out the wand, and wands him wow. again just to make sure. <laughs> wow. And every time it doesn't go off, and Larry says, well, I guess it didn't come back. Hey, all right. Wow. Yeah. And you know what is so important about you even saying that, yeah. again, is, you know, it's, it's about the people. Yeah. yeah. It's about the person. It's not miracles that we can put them on a scratch a notch on our belt. Absolutely. And say, oh, well, our ministry, there's so many miracles. And there's, it's not about that. It's about the people. Did you see the reaction of the people? Do you see the response of the people that are standing around them? Did you see when we have testimonies, even when the friends come? It's all about the person. Jesus is doing this not to make himself famous and scratch notches <laughs> On his spiritual crown no he's doing it so that we walk free and we walk whole and we begin to see him in a life that he truly is he's not a mean God he's not someone that's angry at you he doesn't keep any records of your wrong and he's waiting to see how he can catch you out and and only bless you when when you feel like you're holy or righteous enough that's not how he works he loves you absolutely loves you and gave himself for you so you can understand who he is and you can become like him and together you can take his goodness and spread it everywhere you go that's what this is about this is awesome so always whenever you see a testimony take note of the person and what jesus is doing in their heart and in their soul isn't that awesome okay Enough for me. Come, Christine. And so shall it be according to your faith. Come on. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus went about and healed them all, mm. not just some of them. And it says, by his stripes we are healed. healed. Not we are going to be healed. We were healed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We've seen amazing miracles. Mm -hmm. We've seen tremendous breakthroughs so through your ministry. But you know what? Katie said she made them decree. That's okay. good. Come on, Come on Christine. Come on, girl. Yes. She made them decree because the word mm. of God was settled in their spirit mm. and they were ready to receive their mm. healing that Jesus paid the price more than 2,000 oh, years ago Jesus. for. Yeah. They, are, they were healed. They were just receiving it there, the manifestation of what Jesus has already done for them too, and for you and I. And you know, the word of God, and Katie also spoke about angels, but they are ministering angels sent to serve the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? So they go about serving us. That's right. They go about serving us. And they take your word, and it makes it your word and activate it and make it come to pass mm -hmm. when you receive it yes. in your spirit and it's not if but he will mm -hmm. if it's his will that if it's his will it is his will to heal all of us 
for all of us to walk in divine health. And God's word, conceived in the spirit, formed on the tongue, spoken through the mouth, has created mm. power. Creative power. I said it, that we work, in, we, work we live in a word-created world. Yes. Mm. And Brilliant. you create your own world with your words. What do you believe? It's not your pastor mm. or the person laying off, on of hands. They just the catalyst. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to be up to you because it is also written in his word that God's m word is medicine. Mm. It is medicine. Yes. And you know what, ladies? You can't overdose and don't wait until you're sick. That's important. Don't wait until you're sick. Take the word of God and let it work for you. You partner because it's a partnership. He has done everything he needs to do for you. Now it's up to you to walk in that partnership, to accept the partnership and work his word on your behalf. It's not a, up to you. It wasn't up to Katie. She was just using the word of God and, and they received it. Come on. And the word healed them all. The <laughs> word healed them all. Because yeah. Jesus mm. is the word. Yes. And we sing songs that like there's power, power in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. And he is your healer. Yes. Not going to be. He healed you already. And we need to get an understanding of that. Yes. That we are healed. Yes. We are totally healed. Mm -hmm. Don't take any, any, any package. And don't identify yourself with whatever you have. Oh, my diabetes, my cancer, my headache. Uh-uh, it's not yours. It's not yours. You address it as the cancer, the diabetes, because it's not yours. And you command it to bow its knee at the sound of the name of Jesus. Amen. Because cancer is just a name. And it says, every knee shall bow. Not just some of the knees, mm. but every knee in heaven, on earth, and below the earth. Mm. It has to bow its knee at the sound of the name of Jesus. And just know this. Everything has already been done for you on the cross. That's it. On the one cross. man, one tree, and one cross. And that man's name is Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. That's a good strong word. Come on. Michelle. Yes, uh, Christina, I can also just share the reality from my personal experience and that of my family about the reality of angels mm -hmm. and um, the importance of not taking our protection and God's word for granted. Grant. Mm -hmm. As you say, to not wait until you sick and not wait until you're in a troubled situation before you are motivated to speak his word. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was young um, and I grew up with my parents and grandparents who are farmers, the routine was every night we would um, watch teachings and many times it would be the teachings of Kenneth Copeland mm. and so I grew up with his teachings and yes. one of the things that he said was what you put into your heart every day will come out of your mouth oh. in a dangerous situation mm. and um, my grandparents taught me from small the importance of Psalm 91 and where that became a special psalm in our family was uh, from several year, years ago, my grandparents were in um, a country that was at war. And uh, just for the sake of being able to tell the story um, easier, I'm just going to call the people that were trying to kill them the baddies. And um, so what happened was in this war, um, with my grandparents being farmers, there were baddies that wanted to take their life. And uh, my grandparents are now in their 90s, and they've been married now uh, 68 years. Right. But oh. one thing they do faithfully every morning and every evening is they read the Word of God together, they speak the Word of God, they pray together. And um, part of that always is Psalm 91. And um, 
how it started was during that time, there were three different friends of theirs in different countries, people who were missionaries, who felt prompted by the Father to phone them and say, you know, I've just read the most wonderful psalm in the Bible, Psalm 91. Wow. And um, we feel the Lord laying it on our hearts to tell you the importance of speaking it over yourself and your family every day. So they started to do that. Now in Psalm 91, it speaks about God's angels, and it says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. And um, it talks in Psalm 91 about how a thousand may fall at your side right. and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. In verse 8, it talks about how God's protection for you will be to such an extent that you will be inaccessible to the enemy under his protection. Now, God says what he means, and he means what he says. So let's think about the reality of what God is saying in Psalm 91. For example, if you think of 9-11, when all those, those two huge buildings crashed, fl uh, planes flew into them and so on, amongst all that chaos of the planes and the massive buildings, just over 3,000 people were killed. So what would it take to kill 10,000 people at one time? Well, now you're talking about something like an atomic bomb. So what scripture is saying is that God's protection for you is to such an extent that an atomic bomb can go off next to you and it won't hurt you. Mm -hmm. Now that might sound unrealistic, so this is why I want to share the testimony of my, my grandparents. So um, what happened was, now on the farm they had set their minds to kill them and they studied my grandfather's uh, daily routine and they would be waiting for him when they expected him in the mealy lands or uh, when he was inspe inspecting the bricks, he was a very easy target they would be waiting there in ambush for him but every time they aimed their guns at him this tall man in very bright white clothes would step in the way and so this went on for some time with my grandfather having no idea what was going on but eventually it was getting to the point where these people were getting mocked in their communities because they were saying these are just two elderly people and you you can't even kill them and so they said no don't worry you know we're going and uh, how my grandfather got to find out about that was one day he was going to go to his barns and he just had a check in his spirit where the Holy Spirit said, don't go. So he asked the guy who drives the tractors to take his truck to the barns for him. And these men were waiting there and they caught him and tied him up. And they said to him, um, you know, who is this man in bright white clothes that steps in the way every time we want to shoot straight him? And the tractor driver said, what man in tall bright white clothes we've never seen such a man and um, they beat him up because they thought he was lying and so that's how my grandfather got to hear of it but anyway um, then eventually um, the one night my grandparents were attacked for an eight solid hours and um, of non-stop shooting throwing rockets hand grenades into the house six of them exploded in the room that my grandparents were in seven rockets into the room that my grandparents were in. The next morning they picked up th uh, 3,000 doppies of AK bullets that had been shot into the house. And the house was so shot up that there wasn't a piece of furniture bigger than that big that was left in, um, you know, in, in one piece. Um, all my, my uh, grandmother's clothes were in, in shreds. Um, so the house was absolutely shot to pieces, but not one bullet or nothing touched them. Praise and God. at one stage, my grandfather went to um, radio for help and to let the rest of the farming community know they were under attack. And on the wall, you could see the shape of his body where the bullets <laughs> traced a hole on the wall, <laughs> but not one bullet uh, um, hit him. And the people got the shock of their lives the next morning when they walked out of the house unharmed and uh, just to cut a long story short they went back a second time to uh, to try to take their lives and to attack them but then they saw hundreds of very tall people in bright white clothes walking in the Praise. garden oh. and um, and they ran in terror and left them alone and they never had a problem after that and so uh, from that time on, everyone in the family was taught about the importance of Psalm 91. Um, when I was raised, before I went to bed, we said it every night. And um, I then later on ended up in a life-threatening situation where I had guns at my head. And um, I was in a hijack. The people wanted to kill me. And I thought in a situation like that, I would be terrified. But I had so much peace. And being in that pressured situation, you don't have time to think, right, what's the right thing to do here? Just without thinking, I just started started saying Psalm 91. And um, in, as Katie was explaining, the angels, angels 
you know, responded to that word and a look of terror crossed those men's faces and they sped off. And I looked to see what had frightened them and all I saw was an empty street. Maybe they saw the same Absolutely. tall men in bright white clothes, God's Absolutely. angels you, God. that came Absolutely. to protect us. <laughs> what a it's about, and you know what, it's not, it's not, you, be very careful that you don't form this into a formula, that now no. you, you learn it, and, and I know Christine's often said that, don't make it a recitation now, so now mm. all I have to do is use the formula, speak nine, uh, Psalm mm. 91 over me, mm. it's not, it, that isn't the heart of it, the heart of it is this, mm. I know who I, I am, am in Christ, yes. I know who is on the inside of me, I understand when my soul is in excellence, the dominus power is going to be activated, and when I speak and decree God's word, it's not just coming out of power out of me, but the angels around me hearken to that word and that activates the power on the inside of them so that I walk in his protection, I walk in his healing and I walk in his blessing. This is what it's about and we're here to enjoy every moment of this journey of excellence of soul. And those of you at home, I know that you are ready to email us at Higher Life at myfaithtv.com. We are going to get back to you on all of your questions, but make sure those testimonies come in on how you have learned to take what you have gained from these programs. It's in your understanding and you're appropriating it to see God's goodness in your life. God bless you. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. What a powerful time we've had in the Word of God again. Again, bringing across the truth that the Word of God washes our souls to bring it into excellence. And we appropriate even our healing through that dunamis power that's in, on the inside of us. I'm so excited about this series and I want to thank every one of you who've been watching. I believe with all of my heart that you have taken this truth and made it yours. And to you, my studio audience, I'm so blessed by you. And let's thank our panel of ladies who have brought such wisdom to every one of our programs. In our next program, we are going to continue on this journey of excellence of soul, especially in the area of our physical healing. So until then, God bless you and goodbye. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive inside of you and sickness and disease cannot coexist with that spirit that yeah. raised Jesus yeah. from the dead. It does flow outward as we uh, decree and believe, but we also have access to it out here around us through the angelic host. The bride of Christ is being purified and, pre and equipped uh, to, to prepare herself so that she will be ready so we begin to look like Him. We already like Him in the spirit, remember? But now it's our soul that need to take on that image. That is excellence of soul.